May 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Romans chapter 6 from the New Testament. What shall we say then? Are we to remain in sin so that grace may increase? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that as many as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, so we too may live a new life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be united in the likeness of his resurrection. We know that our old man was crucified with him so that the body of sin would no longer dominate us, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For someone who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that since Christ has been raised from the dead, he is never going to die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires. And do not present your members to sin as instruments to be used for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead and your members to God as instruments to be used for righteousness. For sin will have no mastery over you because you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Absolutely not. Do you not know that if you present yourselves as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, either of sin resulting in death or obedience resulting in righteousness? But thanks be to God that though you were slaves to sin, you obeyed from the heart that pattern of teaching you were entrusted to. And having been freed from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free with regard to righteousness. So what benefit did you then reap from those things that you are now ashamed of? For the end of those things is death. But now, freed from sin and enslaved to God, you have your benefit leading to sanctification, and the end is eternal life. For the payoff of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God, we sure have a hard time with this whole sin thing. Not just that we do it and do it way too much, but we have this illusion that once we become Christians, that somehow this all gets easier. Um, and a lot of times people will read these particular passages we, we just read and think, oh, gosh, am I really saved because I'm still a slave to this sin or this sin or this sin? And interestingly enough, the outside world watches us and thinks that we should be perfect as well as Christians, uh, interestingly enough. And yet that's not what Paul is talking about at all. What he's saying is that we have this freedom, that you have given us this freedom. And for us not to set ourselves up to be slaves again. In Galatians it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So this new heart, this new life, this new relationship that you have given us, the opportunity and the desire to sin doesn't go away. Unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't go away. Yet we have in you strength. And we have in you forgiveness. And we have in you what we just talked about uh, the other day. These opportunities of times of issue, times of stress, times of strife where, 
strife where we get to learn these lessons and we're constantly moving closer and closer to the perfection of your son Jesus Christ um, we're far from it <laughs> as of today uh, but each of these situations we're constantly wanting our heart is wanting to work closer and closer to what that relationship looks like um, it was interesting because before when when I would still say I was a Christian I uh, that's a whole other point to argue but um, I seem to have sought out sin <laughs> couldn't wait to find something even though I still find sin it seems that I have all these other reasons and emotions and tools for dealing with sin in my life than I did before. Uh, I would like to say it's a completely different mindset, but that's not accurate because it's not coming from me. I'd say it's a completely different heart set uh, that I want to act differently. I want to do things differently. I want to see things differently. I want to interact with other people differently. And God, I know that, that, that all of that freedom has come from you. So God, I pray today that we keep out of enslavement now that you've given us this amazing freedom and that we continue to focus on you and your incredible grace that we just love learning more and more about. In your son's name I pray, amen.